Right, today, um, <clears throat> first I must thank uh, YBBM for inviting me uh, to give this talk, mm -hmm. to share my feelings about the Buddha Dharma for you, my understanding. And I've chosen the topic, Sutra or Abhidharma, is a question, yeah? And, uh, okay, now, uh, the purpose of uh, this talk uh, is to discuss uh, this controversy. Where should we go to the Sutra or should we go to the Abhidharma? Is the Abhidharma uh, to be respected to be uh, considered the Buddha's true words. And some people think that, well, you know, the sutras represents the Buddha's direct teaching, and uh, that is the final authority uh, of the Buddha's word. Why do we need Abhidharma? And others even think the Abhidharma is uh, nothing but scholasticism or scholarship or philosophy, yeah, and uh, uh, we can do away with it. And so I hope to discuss this issue. I hope to bring out also the significance of the contribution by the Abhidhamma tradition, yeah, and uh, uh, this is in terms of uh, our understanding of the true import of the sutras, and hence uh, the Buddha Dharma as doctrines and practice. Yeah, I want to show that it makes a very important contribution, and is it is it, it, not to be uh, disregarded. You know, especially among the Chinese Buddhists, and straight away when they see the Buddha Abhidhamma, they say this is Hinayana. You know. Uh, even Theravada is regarded Hinayana and just simply reject it. This is very, very unfortunate. I, I must declare that I am non-sectarian. I have connection with Theravada, I'm just explaining, and I have also connection with Mahayana. I also have Mahayana ordination as well as Theravada nation, so my approach is non-sectarian. Yeah? Uh, well, you can, you can look at me from different perspective. Eh? <laughs> so, so I must say that I'm not, I'm not a very good uh, Theravadin. <laughs> Uh, no, am I a good, uh, maybe, Mahayanist. So, uh, I think, uh, uh, at least in Malaysia they don't know, they hardly know me, but I think overseas uh, they know me as a, a so-called specialist in Abhidharma. So, what is Abhidharma and uh, why I'm interested in it and uh, why I have devoted so much time, I've written so many, I've written books and uh, you know, and uh, dozens and dozens of uh, research papers. Why, you know? <laughs> so I hope you can have some, uh, you, you can have some uh, ideas about all this huh, from this short talk. Uh, it's supposed to last only for an hour, although I'm very boys usually, and uh, most likely I will go beyond time. I have to re stop and remind it. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> and also uh, I want to uh, highlight some uh, uh, contrast of opinions, some controversy in the period of Abhidharma. It's an extremely important period, you know, from the period of early Buddhism and then going down. Buddhism is as a dynamic tradition. It, it, it continues to, to be developed and then into what is called Mahayana and then Tantrayana. In this whole process of development, the Abhidharma, that part is extremely important. Yeah? It helps us to better understand the Sutra and also helps us to, to, to better understand the later so-called Mahayana development. But it is precisely this link between early Buddhism on the one hand and uh, later developed Mahayana Buddhism that is very much neglected for various reasons, yeah? And as I said, one is the attitude that Abhidharma is not important, only Sutra is important. Hence today's question, Sutra or Abhidharma. Uh, as I said, also another reason is prejudice, sectarian prejudices, yeah? Okay, um, 
Yeah, this is the purpose, uh, synopsis of what I want to talk about. Let's begin in the Buddha's time. Uh, in the Buddha's time, uh, there wasn't really Abhidhamma or Abhidharma. I'm using the Sanskrit word. Once or twice I use the Sanskrit and the Pali uh, to show that I don't mean that one is uh, superior or perhaps better than others. Huh? Better, of course, in, in some respects, huh? uh, in one tradition uh, over the other. But I use this, uh, the Sanskrit to represents the uh, general tradition of Abhidharma in India. And that is meant to include Abhidhamma, which is the Pali tradition. Uh, it's not meant to be sectarian. So let me make this uh, preliminary remark. Yeah. So I was saying that in the Buddha's time, you look at the, 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 the so-called Sutta Pitaka or Sutra Pitaka, there's a Sanskrit. Uh, uh, what you, what you can find are uh, the Vinaya and the doctrines known as the Dhamma or the Sutras. Yeah? There the, 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 the isn't Abhidhamma in the, in the specialized sense that uh, came to be developed later and uh, and uh, evolved into what is called the Abhidhamma Pitaka. Normally we think of the, 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 the Tipitaka or Tripitaka, the so-called three baskets, as consisting of the Vinaya collection, uh, Vinaya Pitaka, uh, the Sutra Pitaka, and then the Abhidhamma Pitaka. That actually is somewhat later. Let me tell you that. Uh, that was not the earliest uh, uh, situation. Huh? in the Stupitaka. Yeah. So we, we saw at first only the Vinayas and the Sutras, or Vinaya and the Dhamma. And the uh, so-called Abhidhamma, or Abhidharma, Pitaka then therefore came a bit later. Yeah. And from what we have understood honestly, uh, uh, we cannot claim that the Abhidharma Pitaka represents the direct words of the Buddha. But what is the direct word anyway? What is, what is meant by the words of the Buddha? The word, the Buddha Vachana, yeah, in both Pali and Sanskrit. What does it mean? What does it entail? And this is also uh, what we hope to look into, yeah? So in the, in the Buddha time, there is no uh, Abhidhamma Pitaka. But although the word does occur in the sutras, and, and where it occurs, the meaning, Abhidhamma means pertaining or regarding or concerning the Dhamma. And another sense is, uh, is, a, uh, is a kind of a, uh, eulogy, you know, praising the Dhamma, the great, the profound Dhamma, the supreme Dhamma, yeah, the deep Dhamma. So that is the meaning of Abhidhamma, that word, as far as the word is concerned, that uh, occurs that they are tested in the Sutra Pitaka. Yeah? Mm. I have given a couple of talks. Uh, two days ago, I gave one in Chinese uh, where I explained uh, uh, much more in detail. If you're interested, I think you can get the recording if you have not attended my talk. How many, uh, uh, anybody who was in my talk two days ago? Yeah, one or two. So you have, um, I had an opportunity to go more deeply into, you know, more specifically into Abhidharma. T today is not quite that. Today is the topic is specific, huh? about Sutra versus, if you like, uh, the Abhidharma. So if you're interested uh, in my understanding of Abhidharma uh, and its development and so on, please uh, refer to the video hmm, or the recordings, huh? uh, although it's given in Chinese. Huh? Okay, uh, so therefore, the Abhidharma Pitaka or Abhidhamma Pitaka as such was developed, as far as you know, after the Buddha. But then, is it spiritually significant? Huh? Uh, if you are interested in the words of Buddha, do we need the Abhidhamma? Why do we need Abhidhamma? 
Yeah, that's what I hope to give you some answers. Yeah. Uh, okay, so in the Buddha's time, what we have is Sutta Pitaka Binayapuka. There's another word called Matrika. Uh, sutra Dharas. Hmm? Those so called specially in, in the Sutra, in the Buddha's time, and the Vinaya Dharas, specialists in the Vinaya, and uh, Matrika, a Pali Matika. Uh, coming from the word uh, uh, that has the same uh, uh, etymological uh, source as, as Mata in Chinese, uh, in English. Uh, the matrix, matrix, uh, the, the matrika daras. The matika or matrika lunmu in Chinese uh, refers to a form of uh, tabulation uh, of the of the of the major points, uh, it's a kind of a, a summary list, yeah, a matrix of the Buddha teaching. One example is, for instance, the so-called thirty-seven factors, yeah, conducive to enlightenment. Have you heard of, heard of it? Yeah, thirty-seven factor conducive to enlightenment. The Buddha gave a list. And when he talk about his teachings you know, before he 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 passes away in the Mahaparinibbana Sutta. He refers to 37 items. That is a list. Yeah, it's a summary of all his teachings in his life. Now, Abhidhamma is believed to have evolved from this kind of uh, systematization uh, uh, of the Buddha teaching in the form, you know, in the, in the form of condensed summary, and then on the basis of the summaries hmm, as the source. Hence, a mother, you know, mother gives the offspring. Uh, then uh, elaborations and, uh, and discussions and and uh, and so on uh, uh, evolved into a gigantic collection of texts and doctrines known as what we understand today as Abhidharma. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, uh, I don't, rep I, I won't repeat what I've said two days ago <clears throat> about the meaning of Abhidhamma, but I just want to emphasize the, uh, in the ones that uh, it must not be misunderstood as scholasticism, as philosophy. For me, it's soteriology. It's a doctrine of salvation. And uh, as far as that's concerned, actually the whole Dhamma is. I, for one, would not label Buddhism as a philosophy. And that, that topic I will elaborate maybe on, I think, uh, tomorrow or the after tomorrow, maybe. Uh, uh, I can't remember now. I have two more talks <laughs> in English. Yeah, you can just watch out. Uh, I can talk more on, on that. Hmm? Okay, so then we quickly come to the, the, the actual period of Abhidharma. Uh, and uh, in the northern tradition, there is a very important commentary, Abhidharma commentary, known as the Abhidharma Maha Vibhasha. Chinese is Da People's Salun. This one. Huh? Very extremely valuable text, extremely important. It was translated by our great master Sun Sang, you know. And look at him, he's a good example. He was a Mahayanist and he was specifically a follower of the Yogacara traditions. That what his, if you like, sectarian affiliation, you can, if you can call it that way. But he transcended the bondage of his own tradition. He went to Abhidharma, he went to the early Buddhism, he went into uh, the, the, the Pratyaparamita, you know, and uh, he spent, he lived only up to 65 years old. Yeah? And he spent a very precious portion of his time and energy after coming, coming back, I was returning from, from, from China, translating the Buddhist text and he translated all these important Abhidharma texts. If he is very sectarian in his mind, he wouldn't do that. All the seventh uh, canonical texts 
of Northern Buddhism of Sarvastivada was translated by him. And then he translated this text called the Mahavibhasha uh, into 200 fascicles, not 10, not 20, 200. It's an encyclopedia. Yeah? And then, of course, he translated uh, another text. You will probably see the name again later, called Shunzhen Nilun, Nyana Nusara, uh, 80 fascicles. It's a very complicated, extremely uh, difficult text. Uh, he, he did it. Uh. So here's a good example of uh, what I'm hoping to promote. You know, our understanding of the Buddha's teaching uh, uh, beyond this sectarian uh, current boundaries. That doesn't mean that we have to do away with uh, different schools. No, no. That is not a meaning. You know, Xuanzang loved his own tradition. He never uh, you know, uh, relinquish his tradition, his, his, his school. In fact, he founded the Dharma Lakshana School, Fa Sheng Chung. Uh, but he realized that the true Dharma is to be discerned, right? Uh, uh, with an objective mind. Do away with all the prejudices of traditions and deep into the very heart of the, the essential teaching of the, of, of the Dhamma in the sutras and even in the so-called Hinayana. They call themselves Mahayanis, of course, uh, but he, he was a great, great example. Of course, at that time, he was attacked also by his other Mahayana colleagues and Venerable Master Ying Shun also suffered the same way. You know, Venerable Ying Shun was a Mahayanis and uh, and uh, but later on, he realized that to understand Buddhism truly, he must go into early Buddhism and he must go into Abhidhamma. So, to cut the story short, uh, he studied the early sutras, but he, he didn't know Pali. Uh, he did not know even English. So, he had to rely on, uh, on uh, Japanese translation. So, he trained himself in reading Japanese work. Yeah, and that way, uh, he assessed the Pali Pitaka and he studied brilliantly and then uh, he lectures on them and then uh, produced a book. When he produced that book, now today that book is known as Four Fa Kai Lun. I don't know whether uh, general introduction to, to, to Buddha. That is actually uh, a record of his, uh, of his uh, expositions based on early Buddhism. Yeah, and for the I think for the Theravadians and for those who pursue the early tradition, that should be a very important book. Maybe you people don't understand, realize this, but when when he published that book, that book was thrown on the floor by a great monk, a famous monk. I don't want to name him, but his name was mentioned in Yin Shun's autobiography. And said Yin Shun is Xiao Sheng. Yeah, he's, he's a, Yin Shun is a, is a Hinayanis, you know, and he was rejected like that. Today in Hong Kong also, people respect me because of my position in the university uh, as an international scholar. But, so they are, they are very co uh, you know, cordial and, and courteous, and, you know, outside. But in the heart, uh, uh, in many, I think in many, many at least uh, corners, uh, they have the prejudice. When I wear like this, I'm a Hinayanis, you know. And then I heard, well, Oh, when Professor Damanzu, yes, he knows uh, the languages, he knows Buddhism well, but he, what, he, what he promotes is Hinayana Buddhism, you know. <laughs> Just one sentence, they, will, they want to destroy you. Uh, that's very unfortunate, yeah. I don't, I don't need to be respected, or, uh, but, but uh, I think it's very unfortunate that the, the, even the Buddhists today, the educated Buddhists also have that kind of Mentality. That's kind of psychological complex and the superiorly complex of their traditions, you know. And I must say, of course, uh, this kind of prejudice uh, doesn't exist just in uh, uh, among the Mahayanis. The Theravadin also the same. Yeah. Anything that is not Theravada, anything not Pali, is not Buddhism. We should do away with that now. Yeah. And uh, as I but this doesn't mean that we we must obliterate all the traditions. 
Theravada is great. Mahayana is great. Pure Lane is great. But for it to be a great tradition, we have to we have to establish the authenticity of the teaching. It's a development of the Buddha's teaching. Oh, Abhidhamma also the development of even the Sudapitakas. You can't claim that the Pali Pitaka represents the pristine purity. I, I, I think it's a very extreme statement uh, of the Buddha. You can't even claim that Buddha spoke Pali. Uh, I'm afraid from all my learning, uh, my, this is my understanding. We don't really know even the exact dialect of the Buddha. So I think I'm going to be scolded uh, after the lecture, but I, let me, I, I have to speak honestly. I don't believe in that. I don't believe that the Pali was in priest. But, but I do believe, I do believe that the true teachings of the Buddha are, in fact, preserved in the Pali canon. That's a different thing. And to uh, go back to the, the true historical teaching of the Buddha, and that this topic I'm going to talk about, I think, in the Mahavihara or somewhere, the schedule, yeah. I do believe, on the other hand, that yes, we 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 have to respect uh, the 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 uh, historical records of Gautama the Buddha preserved in the Pali Canon, and part the Pali Canon is the only uh, canon in an Indic language, yeah, and intact. That's the importance of the Pali and the importance of Theravada Buddhism. So the Theravada uh, tradition is extremely, extremely important. I hope I'm not, uh, I, I'm not misquoted out of context. Eh? And likewise, the Mahayana also is a very, very profound uh, tradition. You know, in many ways, uh, uh, in the Mahayana you have uh, even a, a better representation of uh, uh, for instance, the Buddha's compassion, eh? the emphasis on the bodhicitta, putishin, uh, and, uh, and, and, and the bodhisattva ideal as expounded in their school, and their kind of positive approach, you know, uh, in Mahayana is to be appreciated. Yeah, it's not, it's not, to say the least, it is definitely not a deviation of, from early Buddhism. And, and you know there are prejudices and misunderstanding on both sides. Huh? <clears throat> so I, I'm, uh, I think you know that one of the purposes of me coming back uh, uh, in this period is to uh, hope to find a little place you know, of my own uh, where I can set up some uh, courses and uh, according to my own vision. Huh? And, uh, and in which uh, I would like to inculcate a sense of non-sectarianism, yeah? Like what we are doing, if you go online uh, to our website in Hong Kong, you'll see the courses we offer, which includes uh, Pali Buddhism, which includes Sanskrit Buddhism, which includes Theravada, Mahayana, Abhidhamma, <laughs> Pure Land, Yogacara, Madhimika, and all these courses, yeah? Well, we are all different. We have different uh, temperament, different uh, orientation, different liking, different karma, you know, uh, different uh, social conditioning. We have to recognize and accept that fact. Yeah. So if one form of Buddhism may be more helpful for us, we, we need not apologize. Eh? Uh, or for some, it's another form. Eh? Okay, so coming back to the period of Abhidharma, I say a very important link eh, between early Buddhism and later Mahayana Buddhism. What do you find? We find um, a group of uh, uh, Buddhists known as uh, the Dars Tantika, this one, uh, Dars Tantikas, uh, which means the illustrators or the, or the masters of allegories, and then they are skilled in using uh, illustration similes in their preaching. They believe in meditation. They are meditators. At the same time, they believe that uh, 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 they, they must have the mission of preaching. Uh, you know, the Dhamma is not just meant to be kept for yourself. Huh? So they are, they are meditators and preachers roll into one. 
very good, great, great Buddhist example in ancient time. You find them in this text called Mahavibhaga, the great commentary. And, uh, you know, they are the, the Suttadharas. They evolved from the Suttadharas, especially in the Sutras in the earlier period. Yeah? Later on, the Kata story short, they evolved into what is called the Sautrantikas, a, a school of uh, a group of Buddhist masters right, who, who claimed that uh, only the Sutras are to be relied on. The Sutras the sutra, I say sutra in, in singular, which represents uh, to, to the totality of the teaching of the sutra. Uh, the sutra uh, represents the true words of the Buddha. It is the, the, the pramana. So uh, they say that they are sutra pramanika yi jing wei liang. Uh, they take the sutra as the ultimate authority. I think that is correct. The sutra must be the absolute correct. That's where you find the teaching. So they are very, very similar to the Theravada approach or the approach of early Buddhism. But this, this, this group, great master, you people don't know, hardly, hardly anybody knows. At least uh, among Malaysian and Singapore Buddhists. This is very unfortunate. We have all this material in the Chinese. You can read Chinese. Yeah? Um, <laughs> So anyway, so I want to say that so in ancient time, in that period already, there was a group of, of, of uh, Buddhist masters who are interested in meditation and preaching. They said that we must rely only on the sutras, not on the Abhidharma text. So they are kind of against the Abhidharma text, right? So in contrast, we have the other group who are known as the Abhidharmikas, uh, the specialists in the Abhidharma. They say that... Uh, the Abhidharma is extremely important, yeah? And uh, in fact, without the Abhidharma, oh, why well, can I get it up? Oh, this is number three already, <laughs> sorry. Without the Abhidharma, we can't truly discern the true import of the sutra. Yes, sutra is the ultimate authority, but do we really properly understand the Buddhist uh, teachings? Yeah? So, uh, they speak of uh, two types of sutras. One is called Nita Arta Liao Yi uh, in Chinese. The other one is Ne Arta Bu Liao Yi. I don't want to frighten you with all the Sanskrit words and so I try to simplify this. The meaning is, the first one is, Nita Arta are the, are the explicit teaching, you know, with very clear meaning. Uh, the true import, if you like, of the Buddha's teachings. That is beyond the literal wording. Huh? And, uh, and Puliao uh, Yi, Niyata means teaching that are implicit. You have to draw out the meaning. What the Buddha is trying to say here, you know. So we need to do that. What they say is that the Buddha preach, you know, uh, accordingly as the capacity and as the need of the occasion, yeah. And uh, so we we must we must have a systematic methodology to understand the true meaning of teach, the teaching. But today you do that. You go to Buddhist talks. Today you are attending a Buddhist talk. You listen to expositions. Well, that hopefully is a guide to you. Yeah? It's part of your methodology to understand the Dhamma. You want to listen to a, 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 teach, a, a preacher or a teacher to, to see, do I have any clues? Yeah? Do, I, do I find any means, you know, uh, uh, to understand the, 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 the teaching of the Buddha? And you read books. And all these books are guides to you. You know, it's very strange thing. You, you love this book, you love the teachers, you love the preachers, and, you know, respect them, of course you should. But then, when you come to Abhidharma, you just ignore and think, oh, they are not important. They are just scholasticism. Yeah? So, what they say, the Abhidharma says that the sutras definitely uh, constitute the true teaching of the uh, of the Buddha, but then we need a methodology, and that methodology has to be a rigorous one, systematic one, and that's Abhidharma in brief. 
to help us to discern the true meaning, the liao yi, uh, the true meaning of the Buddha's teaching. Mm. So the Abhidhamikas then is in contrast to the South Trandikas or the Dars Trandikas. This Pi Yu Shi, Jin Yang Bu. You have these two camps at loggerheads with each other. Yeah. One say Sutra only, the other say, oh, you must have Abhidharma. In fact, Abhidharma represent the true sutras in, in the sand. Hmm? So this is the controversy, this is a contrasting attitude. <coughs> uh, let me see. Yeah. Oh, I go back to that. I'm used to having it in a different form with, uh, in my PBT. Uh, let me now introduce uh, to you uh, uh, a statement that you find in a very extremely inspiring and uh, interesting Buddhist book. Again, you people hardly hear about it, most of you. I think some, some have, called Chui Shalu in Chinese. Huh? It's Abhidharma Kosha Bhasya. I recommend it. And today you have, uh, besides Xuanzang translation, if you can read Chinese, if you can't, uh, there are two good uh, English translations. There was a uh, there was the great, great translation by the Catholic father, Poussin, I mentioned that, uh, into French. Yeah, And that French text has been translated in recent years into English. And you can refer to the English translation called Abhidhamgusa Basya Chishala. It's a beautiful book, inspiring book, you know, and uh, it uh, it teaches the, the totality of, uh, uh, of of the Buddhist doctrines. You find cosmology there, you find ontology there, you find psychology there, huh? uh, etc. Hmm? You find doctrines of karma, you find uh, 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 to a large portion of uh, expression on on, 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 on on meditation practice, you know, and realizations. Wonderful book. I have not come across a text as exciting, inspiring as this one in the in the Pali uh, Abhidhamma canon. We have the Visuddhimakkha. But uh, when you re read this, you, you realize that Abhidhamma Basha is brilliantly uh, structured and uh, extremely inspiring. So I recommend it. Okay, in this, in this, te this text uh, was composed around the 5th century AD and by Vasubandhu. You know Vasubandhu? Shi Qin in Chinese, huh? And uh, what I'm going to read. Uh, represents the position uh, of the Abhidharmikas. They say, without the expositions in the Abhidharma, a student, that is a student of Buddhism, is unable to discern the Dharma. So what you want is to discern the Dharma. Yes, Dharma is in the sutras. But you need, you need a guide. You need the exposition, that's Abhidharma. So it means that for them, Abhidhamma is indispensable for understanding the true sutras. This is their position. Yeah? They are not rejecting the, the, the ultimate absolute authority of the sutras. But they, they question how, are you sure you just simply, you know, uh, subjectively, can you really understand the Buddha's teachings in the sutras? Yeah, you need some objective criteria, and you have to establish your objectivity, your authenticity, as a methodology. And this is what is provided by the Abhidharma. So without that, you can't, you can't really, much as you wish, eh? uh, uh, to discern the Sutra, the Dharma. And this discernment of the Buddha's teaching, discernment of the Sutra, is what is called Abhidharma. So Abhidharma equals discernment of of the sutra, of, of the sutras. You know the word uh, 
Dhamma Pravichaya or Dhamma Vichaya. You know, think of the the seven factors of both, uh, of of of, uh, of enlightenment. You see, in in the in the Pali in Theravada, you know what I'm talking about. You see, that discernment of the Dhamma is Abhidharma for them. That's the purpose of Abhidharma. Okay. Yeah. Then, in the controversy, they criticize these people who are so enthusiastic to say, all we need is a sutra. Abhidhamma is later stuff, is scholar, scholarship, you know, scholasticism, you know. For instance, I don't like people to call me Xue Wen Zheng. I hate it, and uh, they, 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 they call Venerable Yin Shun and others, and also I think it's in a very unfair manner. You are just insinuating that we are only scholars. Oh, they are just scholars, they are intellectuals, they don't practice. Yeah? They don't, they don't understand the sutras. Do you really understand? Do you, how much do you practice for you to criticize others, you know? And uh, no, Venerable Yin Shun's whole life is a life of practice. I practice in my humble way. A practice is uh, my center concern as a Buddhist, not as a scholar, not as a professor. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So uh, the Abhidhamikas um, uh, answer and criticize this. Uh, the other group called the what are they? Who are they called? The Sautrandikas. And this Sautrandika evolved from the special on the sutras in the Buddha's time called Sutta Dharma, right? And so this brilliant uh, Abhidhamaka, that is a brilliant uh, special of, of Abhidhamma, his name is Sangabhadra. Know this name, I'm sorry, a lot of typing, uh, a lot of type, oh, sorry. Where am I? Back, but. Uh, in my books, I'm afraid, in my published uh, articles, there are always some tapos. You have to tolerate me. <laughs> I'm more concerned with the content. Yeah, and I don't have time to do this kind of too much proofreading. My assistant, my student, do it, and uh, sometimes they miss. Uh, oh, uh, let me see whether I can. I forget that it's Sangha G H A, right? And then uh, Sangha Batra, B H A D R A. Uh, it's a small thing. So. Uh, He's a very brilliant thinker. It's very exciting, inspiring to kind of uh, feel the, 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 the brilliant mind of these ancient masters. How they understood uh, Buddhism and what were their concerns and how they analyzed, you know, uh, issues. And many of which uh, also uh, Applicable, applicable to us in modern time. Yeah? Sangabhadra was suddenly a very, very brilliant master, but you people hardly heard about him. Yeah? In my books, by the way, I quote and translate from Chinese a lot of very important explanation of him. Mm? Okay. He says, thus not comprehending the distinctive features of what they call the Nitharta and Nearta Sutaji Liao Yi Bu Liao Yi Ching, the implicit and the explicit uh, sutras, uh, not not being able to comprehend the distinctive features, uh, they are they are different. Uh. Uh, he claimed that is uh, the, uh, the 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 South Tantra master at that time. His name is Sri Lata. Uh, we take they so proudly say we take the sutra as the authority. Yi Ching Wei Liang the sutra paramika. But then you know, he he said this is extremely illogical. It is for this reason that the, that uh, the, the the our school, he says, uh, repeatedly uh, ridicules them. Hmm? So they must know what constitute the true imports of the, of the sutras. What are to be drawn out from just the mere literal wording in the sutra, and so on. You know. So this is the attitude, and uh, hmm, I think I use this. Yeah, 
Let me introduce you to another uh, argument, expression of, of the same great master, Sangha Bhatra, uh, in this text I have told you. Extremely important text, just like the Mahavibhasha, Tapivashalun, the Sunja Lina also exists only in Chinese, only in Chinese. The original Sanskrit was lost, and no corresponding Tibetan text also. All these very, very precious materials are preserved only in, in our Chinese Tibetaka. And all these were great contributions by Sun Tsang, who himself studied all these texts, though he was a Mahayanist. He studied the so-called so -called Hinayana texts. He loved them. He, he, he felt inspired by them. Huh? So anyway, Sangapadra says here, as the Abhidharma, Abhidharma texts were compiled by the great disciples on the basis of the Buddha's teaching, they are proved by the, by the Buddha. So therefore they are also Buddha Vachana. We mean they are also through Buddha Dharma. Read carefully. First, they admit, they acknowledge that Abhidharma texts were actually compiled, composed by human authors. And they are honest. They don't say that the Abhidharma is also a part of the Buddha's uh, direct teaching. No. They were compiled later. But then they were compiled on the basis of the, of the, of, 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 of the Sutra teachings. Uh, in one place they explain that Abhidharma, Abhidharma texts were compiled by the great disciples of the Buddha. But uh, he didn't fabricate these teachings, uh, say a, a disciple. He collects them from the scattered teaching, teachings in the sutras. Yeah? And they say, it is just like uh, the, the compilation of the text known as the Dharmapada. You know Dharmapada in Pali? Yeah? In, in the Pali tradition, Dhammapada is straight away regarded as the, 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 the teaching of the Buddha directly, but not in the northern traditions. Yeah? And they recognized that the Dhammapada actually was a, was a compilation later. Yeah? And of course, it does contain the deep teaching of the Buddha yeah? that are reflected in the sutras, but uh, as a collection, the Dhammapada, for them at least, uh, was not the direct words of the, of, of, of the sutra. In a way, they are more honest, or, or maybe they are all, This doesn't mean that the Theravada are not honest, I don't mean that. But, you know, uh, they, 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 they are more objective in that way. Yeah? The, the Dharmapada, the northern tradition, northern text, also was extremely important for them. But they, they, they knew, they acknowledged that it was not the direct teaching of the Buddha. It was a collection yeah, of the teachings that you can find in the suttas, collected by the disciples. It's just like that. So, uh, compiled by the great disciples, but on the basis of the Buddha teaching. Yeah, and then they were approved by the Buddha. For a text like Dhammapada to be included in the Sutta Pitaka, it means that it has been approved by the tradition. It has authenticity. Yeah? It has a, uh, reliability. <clears throat> so therefore, they are also the Buddha's word in that sense. Likewise, in other words, the Abhidharmas, the Abhidharma texts were not you can't say that they were directly discussed by the Buddha, but they were based on the teaching in the sutra, elaborated on the basis of what we saw just now as matrika, the matrix. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, they, therefore, they were also Buddha Vachana. This is a very uh, broad perspective of what constitutes the Buddha Dharma. So, most of all, far. What constitutes the, the Buddha's word? Uh, Buddha Vachana for you. Uh. So as they are in accord with the knowledge, we know fully. That's very important. 
No fully means not just intellectually, but with spiritual insight. Huh? Uh, the word is parijna. I don't want to go into the, the grammar. Uh, we have a we have a Sanskrit and Pali grammar book here. If you're interested later, yeah. Um, <coughs> the causes and effects of uh, defilements and purifications. But this this defilement purifications constitute the, the totality of the concern of, uh, of Buddhism, of the Buddhist. Why do we practice the Dharma? Because we, we want to, 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 uh, to purge ourselves of all this impurity in the sense of, uh, of being free from all the perturbances, disturb, uh, disturbances in the mind of defilements, fun now. Huh? We want to clear the fun now. Huh? And we are able to, to come to a state of uh, permanent appeasement, peace, calm. That's what you want as a human being. Not just scholarship, not just so-called uh, moral purity per se, but all this Right? Serving as means for the ultimate purpose of liberation. You want to study Buddhism, not just to be to pass an exam to get your PhD, to be a scholar, uh, to be respected, but you want to find ultimate meaning, meaning of your existence as a human being and to be free ultimately from the from the human existential predicament known as dukkha. That's the true purpose of Buddhism. So Buddhism is concerned with what is called define, defilement, or, uh, or I think a better word is pollution, or corruption on the one hand, and the so-called purification on the other. This is what we call uh, 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 Cha in Chinese, Cha Ran and Qing Jing. This considered totality of the Buddhist concern, and, uh, and Abhidharma is con what they saying. Abhidharma is concerned with this, nothing less than this. Yeah. <clears throat> so they are, therefore they are sutras because they are precisely the concerns of the sutras. So therefore they are the sutras. If what has been approved by the Buddha is not Buddha Vajna, then innumerable sutra would have to be abandoned. Do you what, know what I mean? Look at the Dharmapada. Yeah. They are just stanzas. Are you going to say that because they, it doesn't start with Evan Me Sutang Rushri Oven, then they are not the sutra? No. They are also sutras. But then, as I've said, their attitude is that these sutras are not directly spoken by the Buddha, but nonetheless, in the true sense, they are sutra. They, they, they also represent the true teaching of the Buddha, yeah? even though not directly word by word spoken by the Buddha. Yeah, and uh, what about these uh, many stories? What about Jatakas? What is a part of uh, the Navanga, Dwata Sangha, uh, the ninefold or twelvefold division of the of of the Buddha Vachanas? They are all Buddha Vachanas, but strictly speaking, only the first is uh, is is is. Uh, Apple as Sutra. You know what I mean? You have Sutra, Yeya, Vyakarana, Gata, and then and so on and so on. Do you understand? The ninefold division or the twelvefold divisions. Okay? It is a, is a scheme to classify the Buddha's teaching in terms of the different genres. Today we cannot spend time to diverge into this, but this is basic Buddhism. So when you look at this ninefold division or twelvefold division of the Buddha Vajana, you find that only the first one is called Sutra. The rest are not called Sutra, but still they are Buddha Vajanas. So they say, therefore, it is in this same manner that we should understand the Abhidhamma as Sutra. The last anger, the last uh, so-called limb, yeah, out of the nine or out of the twelve, represents the Abhidhamma or Abhidharma. 
Otherwise, you have to you have to abandon all the all the all the other eight. You, you will take only the first. Only any sutra that is entitled as sutra is to be regarded as sutra. The rest are not. You know? In fact, there, there is this the argument even in the party tradition. Uh, Southern Master was Sudina later on to say that the, the Buddha teaching uh, are those which which uh, contains the title sutta. If, if, if the word sutta is not there, they are not. He said, he was one of the great uh, Abhidhamma master in the Pali tradition. He said that uh, they are not. They are not uh, Buddha Vachana. So this question of sutra Abhidhamma, you know, and uh, Abhidhamma, uh, in what sense uh, can it be treated as the sutras? So in what sense they are to be called sutras? Yeah, and uh, so on. It has been a controversy since ancient time in the Abhidhamma period. Eh? And uh, in the northern tradition, especially, the specialists in Abhidhamma brilliantly answer this criticism and explain their position. And uh, this is what I hope to uh, highlight. Here, I, I just now talk about the uh, 12 Anga, this is in the Northern Traditions, yeah? 12 uh, four classifications in the, in the Theravada, you know there are nine. Yeah? Sutta, Geya, Vyakarana, and so on, yeah? Kata, etc. Hmm? And you look at Sangabhadras, the same master, his explanation of what Sutra is, you realize uh, that, uh, that he understands the Abhidhamma in, in, the, in the same sense, in the same way. Hmm? He says, by Sutra, that means the first Anga. Are you following me? First Anga is Sutra. Second Anga is, in Pali is Geya, in Sanskrit is Geya. Huh? <coughs> Third one is Vyakarna, and so on. Huh? So the first one, Sutra, when he explained one by one, uh, he start with sutra, he said, this is sutra. By sutra is meant that which assumes and contains all the words which accord with the firm principles of both conventional and full of conventional and absolute truths. Sutras in this sense, this important uh, position, are either discoursed by the Buddha. Yes, whatever they are directly discoursed by the Buddha, of course, uh, it's a sutra. But also, they can be discoursed by the disciples. They are also sutras. In fact, in the Pali canon also, you have great uh, nun like Dhammadina preaching. Yeah? These are all con uh, 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 collected in the Sutta Pitakas, Yeah, So their attitude has always been there, even in the Buddha's time. So therefore, sutra, sutra in this sense are either discoursed by the Buddha or by the disciples. I'm translating from the Chinese. If you're interested, you can find the Chinese. Right? For the, the letter discoursed, that means that those discoursed uh, by uh, the disciples, uh, the, the letter discoursed because the content was approved by the Buddha. That is a very uh, broad uh, uh, sense of the sutras, broad perspective sutra. Yeah. So now uh, I want to go quickly um, to give you an example, right, uh, of how the Mahayana look at their sutra as sutras. Ah, Mahayana sutra just a But it it has the same significance. Uh, for the for the for the understanding of Abhidharmas. Ah Abhidharma Sutra can in what sense they can be regarded as sutras? In what sense in what way they can help us to understand the sutras? In fact they are the sutras. Yeah? So you find that in the what I'm trying to say is that in the Abhidharma period already the Abhidharma people especially have had to answer that question. This is what I've seen how how they represent themselves. Huh? Answer that question. We find the same attitude when Mahayana developed. They said basically the same thing, extremely interesting. And when you come to Mahayana, suddenly, as it were, 
a, a huge bout of uh, literature, you know, the Mahana Sutras just appeared, you know. So are they? Are they? The real words of the Buddha? Are they sutras? Yes, for them they are the sutras. You know, some people say, oh, this is just dishonesty, you know, uh, fabrications, huh? I put to the model through. But you, we, we should not look at them in this way. Yes, they are fabrications, they are forgeries in any, any religious tradition. But the profound Mahana Sutras can be truly regarded as sutras. So in what sense? Certainly not in the sense that they were directly spoken by the Buddha, you know, 2,500 years ago, huh? Uh, in Magadha, in those, yeah, not, not in that sense, like not in the same sense as Sutras say in the Pali Canon. So, but then in what sense? Well, in the sense of what we have seen uh, as indicated, explained by the Abhidhamikas uh, people, uh, the Sangabhadra. Let me, let me introduce you to this. Um, Tell me the time. I don't know the time. I transcend time sometimes. <laughs> so I'm uh, going beyond time, but I have to finish this, okay? So let me introduce you. That day uh, when I was uh, giving the Chinese lecture, I wanted to introduce this in Chinese, but then I had no time again. So today I want to make sure. I did say it in my uh, lecture at uh, uh, BGF. If you go online, probably you can see. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I quoted this sutra. This is from a text known as the Asta Sahasrika Pratya Paramita. In Chinese, it's a Pura Pachin Pachin Sung Pura. So, uh, Pratya Paramita in 8,000 lines. It's a very, very important text. By the way, uh, I have brought this, uh, my, uh, my, my Chinese, my, my Sanskrit grammar book, right? Uh, it's completely uh, focused on this text, yeah? And uh, when, you, when you learn the Sanskrit in my, from my book, from lesson one onward, you can, anybody can follow without the ABC of Sanskrit. You are from day one, right? Uh, led to, to, to understand all these minor terms and con concepts and, you know, terminologies or in Sanskrit. And, and then you are led to read more and more uh, uh, complex sentences, you know, phrases, sentences and passages in this text that I'm quoting here. It's very, very important because why, why this is text is very important because we believe from our studies that this represents the earliest, the earliest uh, uh, Pratya Paramita text. You know, Pratya Paramita literature is a huge bout of uh, literature, but this one is, we know, is the first one. Of course, not in the, in the extent form. The extent form is already Sanskritized. We believe the origin it was uh, composed in what is called a, a Prakrit, a dialect. Huh? We don't quite know what dialect it is, but you know, it's, it's, it's like similar to Pali. Pali is also a dialect, yeah? And uh, it went through a process of, of a sensitization. The text, we have it today in the library. The text that I have presented in this, my Sanskrit book, it's already a later version. It's already sanctitized. Yeah? And also, uh, I believe that uh, uh, in terms of the textual evolution, it began, it began with just chapter one. Even chapter one has to be expanded, and then it you know, evolved into various chapters. So I want to, therefore, it's very, historically, it's very important. It, it represents the, the position, uh, of the emerging Mahayanis at that time, they were emerging as a new movement. So they want to, they had to address this question. Is the teaching called Pratya Paramita that we are talking about, presenting as a new doctrine of Pratya, is it, does it represent the Buddha's true teaching? So can this Mahayana Sutra be really regarded as a Sutra? 
Are we entitled to speak like this? So if you accept their position, then you can see that they are not trying to fabricate because this is their own conviction that this is true teaching of the Buddha. After all, the Pali Suttas, you can't believe that the Buddha always start as the Sutra is saying, Evang me suttang, is this is supposed to be added and uh, this is supposed to refer to Ananda anyway, right? And, and be, uh, the, 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 the discourse of the Buddha becomes, you see a lot of stock phrases, uh, st stereotype kind of expressions. You can't believe that Buddha keep on repeating himself like that, you know? Uh, so in that sense, even the suttas cannot be word, word by word, the, 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 discussed by the Buddha himself. Right? There, there, there has been a process of editing even the, in the Pali traditions. Yeah? So if you can tolerate and accept in that way, then you should be able to see these Mahana Sutras and Abhidhamma in the same way. Not all Mahana Sutras, not, not all Abhidhamma texts, but at least the authentic, the genuine ones. Yeah? So this is what they say. <coughs> uh, as I said, they have to, at that time, at the very but I would say at the very beginning they had to address this question. Yeah? Where the, now we are presenting a so called minor sutras. Can we claim that there are also sutras? Of course the answer is yes. Why? Let me read it. So here you see uh, you know a very interesting a dialogue between Subhuti and Sariputra. We know both appear as among the foremost disciples of the historical Buddha. It's very interesting. It's like Supiti represents a new kind of movement, you know, and Sariputra represents the mainstream orthodox movement, traditional Buddhism. Then Supiti is saying, uh, they, uh, Supiti understands that uh, Sariputta has some doubt in his mind. Oh, what is being discussed by Sariputta as later on we call it emptiness, but uh, it's very interesting in this, in this text, in the, in the earlier part, even the word uh, emptiness doesn't occur. It's a doctrine of no self. It's a continuation of the, you know, party tradition of anatta. But people don't see the, because of the sectarian bias, they don't see the importance of this text. They, oh, this is my other text. They have nothing to do with us. No, they help us to understand even the Buddha teaching of uh, of no self also. Yeah. So this is one, uh, one of the purposes hmm, of my to to introduce you to you. So here you see Buddha, uh, Subhuti, uh, discerning the doubt in Sariputta's mind, answers him. Yeah. Subhuti is saying, is what uh, Sariputta was thinking in mind, is what Subhuti is discussing, the words of the Buddha himself, or is he, is he fabricating, telling us that, you know, uh, we have to go for not just Pratya, but the perfection of Pratya called Pratya Paramita, you know, and so on. Hmm? And he is uh, discussing uh, uh, the, the, the Buddhist teaching in, in a way that is not familiar to me, you know, that is to, to Sariputta. So Subhuti discerns in mind in answer like this. Whatever, let me read to you, whatever the Bhagavad disciples teach, all that is to be known as the Tathagata's direct effectuation. This is my translation. And uh, the word is Shi Yong. I don't want to explain too much to you. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a direct um, contribution, not indirect. This is what they mean of Shi Yong. Huh? So I translate as the direct effectuation. In other words, the direct teaching of the Buddha. Yeah? So Subhuti is saying, whatever, whatever the disciples teach, even these disciples are not specified as only monks or nuns. Any disciple, this is the minor position. Eh? Whatever the Buddha's disciples teach, all that is to be known as the Buddha's, if you like, own words. To paraphrase a bit. Okay? Why? Because, for whatever Dhamma taught by the Tathagata, all this. Uh, the accurate remarks has gone, I don't know why. They, who are the they? The disciples, eh? in later time. They, well even the scholars today, they are disciples of the Buddha in later time, in the 21st century, 22nd century. Yeah? They, 
Now, this is the important con condition. Training, in the first of all, they must train themselves. They must be training. They, are not, they cannot be just mere scholars and speculating from their intellect. Yeah? Training in it. In it means in the Buddha teaching. Yeah? Realize is through nature. So, practice realization. This have got to be there in this continuous tradition. And this tradition, the continuous flows, right? Is an outflow from the direct enlightenment of the Buddha. So the Buddha attained enlightenment. He realized uh, the supreme wisdom. He looked into reality through as it is. And then that wisdom is transmitted in space-time, yeah, through traditions, continued traditions. So tradition is extremely important. Tradition cannot be discarded. We try to be smart and say, today, uh, no, no, we don't need this. We have to ad adapt to modern situation. Of course, we, have, we need adaptation, but we can. Adaptation must be on the basis of the authentic tradition. So, so, so I don't advocate the, 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 uh, uh, the rejection of traditions. I, I, I think that uh, we must uh, love our traditions, whether you are Theravadans, whether you are Mahayanis, and yeah, go, go on and promote your own tradition. But everybody must have this objectivity to see the true teaching of the Buddha in the totality of Buddhism beyond the boundaries of sectarianism. Yeah? What we want is the true Dharma, not the, not just the mere tradition, even though we must love our tradition. Yeah? So, whatever is taught by the Dhamma, say, the Dhamma, Dhamma is the real teaching of the Buddha. Okay? <clears throat> I'm going to repeat this uh, in the Mahavihara. Uh, maybe I have time to expound more. So, they train, they come to realization, training, realization, then they realize reality, the true nature of Dharmas, and they preserved it, the holy in mind, having realized and held its true nature, then, what then? So first, you have the precondition. Then, whatever they teach is not contradictory to its true nature, the reality. Yeah? In fact, it is just an emanation, or Professor Conzi's translation, outpouring. There was the word, this is the Sanskrit word, if you, if you can understand, Nishanda. Chinese is Deng Liu, Deng Liu. It flows down, right? From where? The ultimate source of Buddha's enlightenment, Buddha's wisdom. Yeah? And it flows down, and this flow must be continuous. And in this continuous tradition, there must be real practice, training. There must also not just training, but there must be spiritual realizations. So if these conditions are fulfilled, then whatever the disciples in the training preach cannot possibly be contradictory to the true nature. Because it's based on, ultimately, it's traceable to the Buddha's wisdom. This is, the, this is their argument. Huh? So in, in that way, huh, uh, what they teach then, it's not contradictory to its true nature. It is because it is just an emanation, an outflow, flowing out, Tang Liu, uh, of the Buddha's Dharma teaching. Whatever they are expounding as the true nature of that Dharma, they do not cause it to contradict to the true nature. Because they, they have this whole solid tradition, continuous, uh, in which there is practice, there is a realization. So, you can say the Abhidharma uh, expositions, right, at least uh, the good aspects of it right, can be understood in this way and also Mahayana also. So, in that way you can unify all the different, all the different traditions. What you want is the true Dharma. Yeah? There's a, there's a you know, the Chinese uh, important uh, uh, teaching uh, Yi Fa Bu Yi Ren Have you heard this? 
Eh? You must rely on the Dharma, not the person. And that person in the broad sense can mean the whole tradition. It doesn't mean that you reject your guru, your teacher. You have to respect them, you have to tune in, learn from them, learn from the traditions. But it mustn't be based on blind adherence. Right? So Buddhists must be themselves critical. This is also Theravada teaching. Like think of the Kalama Sutta, for instance, you know what I'm talking about, right? So, uh, all you want is the Dhamma, is the Fa, not the, not the tradition. Eh? But you also love and respect the tradition. I'm going to talk about this, I hope, uh, in one of the, my next two lectures. So, whatever they're exploring as a true uh, nature of Dharma, they do not cause the contact with the true, uh, uh, with, with the true nature of reality. Hence, and it is Abhidharma, and it is uh, Buddha Vashana, and it is Buddha Dharma. Yeah? The hand is sutras, in the real sense. So just that uh, the Mahayana is just like the Theravadin, they put Evam Maya Sutta, Evam Maya Sutram in Sanskrit. If, you know, the Pali people can put Evam Maya Sutta and then still they, 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 they accept as a true teaching of the Buddha. Why not the Sanskrit text? Why not the Mahayana text? Yeah? And why not the Abhidharmas? Yeah. Uh, finally, <coughs> it's already well beyond, uh, be, be beyond time. Uh, let me show, uh, let me want to uh, introduce you some, some other in interesting material. In, uh, represent the Abhidhamma tradition in contrast to the Sutra Sartrandika traditions and uh, they want to emphasize that Abhidhamma is actually concerned with practice with realization I've seen I've told you that right now uh, this is what they talk about you people are interested in what they call Vipassana right mindfulness and all these things but these are pre precisely the concerns of Abhidhamma yeah uh, so uh, the Mahavibhasa in very early time, Mahavi Basha, uh, the, the, the material that went into the Mahavi Basha, the great commentary, actually uh, must be even before the modern era. And, uh, and, uh, and the completion of the, of the fullest version, translated by Sun Zhang, must have taken place around the middle of the second century, uh, the so second century CE. So very, it's very, very early. Huh? And this is what this text says. Those who mostly cultivate the requisites, ziliang, uh, sambara, of insight, the vipassana, uh, the vipassana is a Sanskrit word. Hmm? Those who cultivate the vipassana as the as spiritual requisites uh, are those who, at the stage of preparatory effort, that is before, before you really gain true spiritual realization. I put it in the simplest way. Huh? Uh, that 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 uh, stage is called uh, preparatory effort, prayoga, jia huh? xing. Huh? Uh, always delight in studying and reflecting on the Tripitaka. So this is the place. This is the role of studies. Buddhism, uh, uh, Abhidhamma give is due place. It doesn't reject intellectual studies. It's due recognized. But of course, you cannot be just stuck at intellectual study. But you need to study. You don't shy away from scholarship. Be a good scholar if you can. You know, acquire all this uh, scholarly equipment. But your ultimate concern should be with liberation. Today, we can cultivate that inculcate that kind of attitude in Buddhist scholarship, I think it's a, it's a very important uh, contribution. <coughs> at the state of preparation, always the, the, there are people who delight in studying and reflecting on the Tripitaka. But this is at the stage of preparation only. Yeah? And this stage is indispensable. Yeah? But they will go on to enter into direct realization of the truths and to be transformed into a so-called Buddhist s saint, an Arya, Sheng, 
啊，有些转凡成圣啊。This is the purpose of practice, right? The purpose of study, not for the mere sake of study. That's how Buddhist study should differ from ordinary academic or scholarly studies. But study is also extremely important as a preparation. And these are the people, if they are, if they have uh, sincerity, if they have commitment, spirit commitment, if they practice, if they have faith, ultimately they will. Come to spiritual realization. Come to、uh, the vipassana. Come to the insight. Yeah. Then, at the time when this happens, right? So in the in the school study, what do they study? They repeatedly examine the specific and general characteristic of dharma. This that means the、uh, the、uh, you know、uh, what are the forces in the universe? What are the factors that you know occur in our in in the mental makeup? You know when we perceive a thing, what happens? You have the chitta, you have the chesasika. You know what they're talking about?、Huh? The analysis of what what is called psychology,、hmm? but the so-called Buddhist psychology is much much more much much more beyond and much more profound than what is understood as psychology in the ordinary sense. So、uh, all this is studying about the different dhammas, the different forces in the universe operating on us. Externally, internally, physically, mentally, you might say spiritually. Yeah. So this is study is not just scholarly study. Yeah. This is what they want to say.、Uh, these are topics of, in fact,、uh, fundamental topic of Abhidharma. Abhidharma, Abhidharma is precisely we have seen Dharma Pravacchaya. Yeah. The discipline of dharmas. So to understand. The true nature of all the existent entity, all the forces in the universe. If you say, "I want to know why I am disturbed, why do I have depression, how do I overcome this?" First, you must know what caused this depression, what 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 caused these、uh, unwholesome states, and then how do I cultivate the wholesome mental state and encourage them to come out? Yeah. Okay. So you have to. So-called study, examine the dhammas. It is a study. It's examination. This is a、uh, integral part of abhidharma. Yeah. But the ultimate purpose is to lead you to gain what is、uh, in this context、uh, vipassana, to gain insight. When they enter into the noble path, that means when they become an arya. Do you understand? When they when they be, When they gain spiritual insight, they are called the vipassana type. Look at this kind of wording.、Huh? You can see that it is certainly praxis orientated, relation that this is abhidharma. So now what they're saying is, at the stage of、uh, accumulating, collecting the requisites on the journey, spiritual journey. Yes, you have to study. You have to. Even do punya, you have to do dana. All these are important things. Don't shy away from them. Cultivate the positive mind, a mind of、uh, giving, a mind of offering, a mind of respect and and faith. All these, yeah. And then study. Don't shy away from them. Oh yeah, I'm interested in only meditation. I'm interested in vipassana. I don't need studies. These are all scholarly stuff. Very wrong attitude. That's why these people. Don't appreciate Abhidharma. So this sutra, this this passage that I've just、uh, quoted, states that these are all what is called requisites, and necessary as what is called a preparatory effort. But one day, you have to enter into the noble path. Otherwise, all your studies, all your merits,、uh, you gain and so on, your good behavior, will be of will be in vain. Uh, they must all lead you to the to the point of realization. This is the goal of the true goal of Abhidharma. Then at that time they are called the vipassana type. How interesting! So they speak in terms of samatha vipassana.、And、this is in Abhidharma. So I believe that the main concern of Abhidharma is actually meditation and realizations.、Uh, this is. Although I don't have time to、um, uh, go too much into it,、uh, 
I think this will suffice uh, to illustrate the point. Finally, let me quote um, another, another passage in the Abhidhamma Bhasha, which I gave two days ago in Chinese. Huh? So here I'm, I'm translating the Sanskrit, not the Chinese now, uh, into English for you. So in this text called Jusha Lun, Abhidharma called Bhashya, uh, this is what it says, uh, it's about Abhidharma. Why is Abhidharma important? Why the Buddha taught the Abhidharma? Or in fact, it, it tells you who taught the Abhidharma. The answer is the Buddha himself. But in the sense, of, in the sense we have seen, not that the Buddha directly word by word you know, composed the Abhidharma text, but the Abhidharma text were compiled on the basis of the scattered teachings of the Buddha in the sutras. You understand? We have, we have said that. Huh? So here is the verse. If you know some Chinese, you can read yourself. We have no time. I already explained that that night. I won't repeat it. Huh? I'm translating now, not from the Chinese, but from the Sanskrit. But Chinese translation is very, is, is very, basically very literal. Huh? He says that uh, uh, this is the translation. Sins. Apart from the discernment of dharmas, now I hope you have understood one thing from my talk. Discernment of dharmas means abhidharma. It means also wisdom. But this is the dharma is wisdom. So abhidharma is uh, is the discernment of dharmas and uh, that equals discernment of dharma which equals pure wisdom. This is what abhidharma is. Abhidharma is not scholarship. Yeah. <clears throat> so, apart from this, i.e., apart from Abhidharma, then, there is no excellent means for the appeasement of defilement. So, why do we need Abhidharma, in other words? Because we want to appease, we want to subdue defilements. Not for the sake of being respectable, moral human beings. No. You know, that is in order to come to a state when our mind is not disturbed, not perturbed by these so-called defilements. That is the purpose of whatever you call it, Theravada or Mahayana or any form of Buddhism. That is a purpose, to come to a state of appeasement, mental appeasement. As the, hence, that's why we talk about, um, you know, eradication of defilements. Yeah. <clears throat> so in that sense, Buddhism is not also uh, a moral system. No, no, no. Some people say, uh, well, you know, all religion teach you to be good. That's all, full stop. I think Buddhism is goes so far beyond that. <laughs> anyway, I don't have time to elaborate on that. I think you know. Okay. And it is on account of the defilements. The thing is, it's on account of the, of the defilements that being one day in samsara. Right? Dukkha means we cannot transcend samsara. We can't transcend samsara because we have defilements. We don't, we don't observe precept because it is a requirement of the Buddhist tradition. It is expected by the teachers or by the Buddha or whoever. No, not like that. That's not Buddhism. Buddhism is not authoritarian. Yeah? But we understand the Buddha's recommendation that if we want to gain peace of mind, this is what we want today. People suffer, they have depression, they have psychological problems, you know, and they have conflict, they want to kill others, they want to destroy another culture, another country. You know, because they are disturbed by the mind is is disturbed. The mind is disturbed, and in Buddhism we call this defilement, fun now. This is fun now. Yeah, that's the purpose of practice. The purpose of observing precept. You don't kill not because it's a commandment. Thou shall not kill. No, like that is authoritarian structure like Christianity. The Buddha tells you not to dis destroy other lives and then in practicing that, you're practicing compassion, bring out your innate 
human virtue of compassion, then you feel that you are the oneness of others, you, you transcend the boundary of the self. Through this, ultimately, you actually you can realize anatta. That's the purpose of the, all these precepts. Not for the sake of being nice and obedient Buddhist, like nice and little good school, school kids, you know, or, or being the, the, the school system or the tradition. Yeah, so it is to, uh, for the appeasement of defilements. Because if our mind is perturbed, we can't, we continue to wander in samsara, we continue to suffer. Because suffering to ourselves and society at large. Hmm? So for this reason, because this is the reason of Abhidhamma then, for this reason, therefore, it is said that the Abhidhamma is taught by the Master, i.e. the Buddha. So, we answer several important questions. Who taught the Abhidhamma? They say it's the Buddha. But they also say that, not in the sense of the Buddha having directly word by word declared the, the Abhidhamma text, but the later disciples compiled the Buddhist text. So, the, the Abhidhamma text. Abhidhamma text were compiled by the disciples later. But the compilation is based on the teaching from the sutras. Hence, you know, recall what I have quoted in the, the, the Mahayana Sutra statements and also Sangabhata. In that sense, it comes from a continuous flow tradition in which there is practice, training, and realization. Hence, it's Buddha Vachana. It, it, it's the same insight, the same enlightenment that flows on and on and on and you know, at every point of time. No deviation from that. Then we must be Buddha Vasana, okay? True Buddha Dharma. <coughs> okay, let me come to the conclusion. Therefore, we can conclude uh, very briefly. First, I agree that it is true that the sutra or the sutta huh, constitute the absolute authority of the Buddha's teachings. Yes. In that sense, uh, the sutras are of central importance. Yeah? The early Buddhist discourses, i.e. the Pali Suttas, for instance, the Agama text, for instance, must be respected and, and regarded as the Buddha Vachana. What did Buddha Dharma? Buddha Dharma are the early discourses. Yeah? And the Buddha Vachana. Mm -hmm. Number two, yes, Abhidharma is developed later. Later Dharma, later than Vinaya and Sutra. Yeah? However, number three, we need not of course, agree with the Abhidhamma claim, all the claim. We, we, don't, we don't think that everything claimed by the Abhidhamma uh, expert is, is, is valid. Eh? But I think they have said something, uh, many things that are extremely meaningful, extremely reasonable. Yeah? Uh, however, so we, know, we, we need not accept or agree with all their claim. However, Abhidharma is a very important contribution because it provides a systematic and develop methodology. What we need is a methodology, is to, de to discern the true meaning of the, uh, the true import of, of the Buddha teaching in the suttas. So therefore you see the relationship between sutra and Abhidhamma. Eh? Approach properly, eh? when the Abhidhamma is approached in this, pro in this properly, again also of course it requires some uh, critical uh, attitude. Eh? It can help us to discern the true Nithara teachings, Liao Yi, uh, Nithara teachings in the sutras. Uh, and, and this is in respect of both, not just doctrine but also practice. We have seen that. The, uh, the Abhidhamma people say that the study, examinations, and intellectual study are actually very important, but there are preparations. You need that preparation, and then if you continue to understand and feel inspired and then proceed to practice and realize then you enter into the noble path. Then you become transformed in the area. So therefore, Abhidhamma uh, contributes 
in respect of both doctrines and practice. I think that's, uh, I'm sorry, they have gone far beyond time. So thank you very much. <laughs> wow.